Schizophrenics. What is it like to have schizophrenia? It's fucking agony. At every stage of your life it will make you suffer. I very recently got non-medication. Over the course of two years I finally managed to find medication that work very well. The side effects aren't that bad. At least compared to the medications before. Anyways, I think the worst part is that it will cause you to act in ways that nobody will ever understand. You will fully believe things that are completely nonsensical. Paranoid episodes are horrific. Imagine feeling like everyone is trying to kill you. I mean that literally. I know that phrase gets tossed around a lot, but actually try and picture it for a second. Have you ever been running from someone you thought was out to get you? Literally picture that at every corner you see someone that feeling comes. That feeling of fear is horrible, but it's made so 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 much worse by how people react. My parents couldn't tell what I was feeling. I thought that if I told anyone about the hallucinations or the crazy conspiracies I thought were real, I would die. So I would hide. When I started panicking, I would try to hide it, and my parents would make me panic so much more. The way that it cripples you socially is one of the worst element of it to me, and that social isolation will just add more and more legitimacy to your delusions, because nobody is there to tell you that it's crazy. I was always in a state of constant alertness because of stupid things I was afraid of. When I finally started coming out about it, I was met with tons of resistance and claims I was lying. It really fucking hurts to come out about your problems and get hate for it. The way it makes your head race is just painful. Staying up all night thinking I was in danger, overthinking everything and everything, hearing things that aren't there, and being convinced it was real. Then there's what they call delusions of grandeur, where you think you're powerful or genius or supernatural. These make you do crazy shit, often extremely dangerous, and ungodly embarrassing later on in life. Just a note for everyone out there please, when somebody comes out about it please, be patient, don't panic, and accept that this is really happening. Schizophrenia is not just a thing in music and movies, it is a real thing in the real world, and it really fucking hurts. I'm sure I could explain this better, if I took a little more time for it, this is a really rough explanation. Getting a bit emotional about it, but yeah, it fucking sucks. I've heard people say I wish I was schizophrenic, yes, I've actually heard that said before. And it's the most insulting thing I've ever heard. I spent a few weeks in the psych ward for marijuana induced psychosis, showing lots of schizophrenic tendencies. This is about the most accurate depiction of what I was feeling. The 5 days before I was admitted was the scariest, most difficult interactions I've had with friends, family, and strangers ever. Everyone knew. But no one could talk about it cause they were listening. Like everything that was said was code for something else. I can tell you are a strong person by what you've had to deal with. Keep your thoughts straight and know you're here for a reason. Damn man I feel that completely. I had to stop smoking weed because it just wasn't enjoyable. I got too into my head and had really big insecurities and delusions about my friends and girlfriend. I almost lost a lot of good relationships because of my social paranoia and crazy ideas of everyone turning their backs on me and hating me because of reason that I completely made up. The worst part was that I was young and so was everyone else so no one knew how to deal with it. I'm glad I completely kicked the habit and rarely, if not ever, have those thoughts. Weed fucking sucks lol. It definitely can. It's crazy how your perception changes, and through no fault, but how your brain is filtering what people are saying, their body language and mannerisms, turns a normal conversation into an attack on what you're thinking. I still smoke, but I don't like getting really high. Mainly CBD just cause I like the smell, taste and small effects without causing perception altering debilitation. I remember I was getting out of the trade, and squaring up with my boss on product. We smoked a sativa strain, and I got so paranoid I couldn't count without thinking we were being set up. If there's ever a joint being passed I'm very careful of how much I smoke, because it has ruined my night before, causing embarrassing and awkward situations. It's not fear, it's knowledge. You're not worried your friends are plotting to kill you. You know your friends are plotting to kill you. Even when you know you're having a delusional episode, you're still convinced the worst thing you could ever imagine is happening. 
there's no way to shake it. I wonder what it manifests like in a time and place without like. Lifetime movies and such that really legitimize and push the idea that such things happen a lot. Delusions are less severe in other cultures. Worth noting studies lean more towards this being caused by greater mental health stigma and shittier familial support, not media. I'm able to enjoy shitty movies as much as the next person. Well, I don't have schizophrenia, but when studying mental health we had to do this thing, where they put headphones on us to simulate what it's like to have audio hallucinations. We had to try and complete tasks and do tests. They started out with just random scratching noises, and gradually people started whispering random stuff. It was impossible to get anything done, or do the tests. Every now and again a voice would say what a good job we were doing, and how we were the best person in the world, then a second later just profoundly disturbing screaming, and someone saying she's dying over and over again. So like, I'm not an expert, but like, that was a bad time. Did that too super cocky going and humbled coming out. <laughs> Fucking terrifying. Delusions become truth. I was laying down in bed last night facing the mirror. I was completely relaxed, and my expression neutral. Then I saw my eyes flare up and widen demonically. It was fucking terrifying. It wasn't me. Then there's dealing with voices screaming at me to kill myself. Berating me and telling me I don't deserve to live. Dragging up my past, and using it as ammunition. I respect cops, but every time they drive by, while I'm walking on the sidewalk, I think they might jump out of the vehicle and kill me. It feels like everyone is laughing at you, judging you and plotting against you at all times. Nowhere is safe. There's either the demons outside, or the ones in your own home trying to kill you. One of the worst hallucinations I had, was a month ago. After my spouse left to work out of state temporarily, I saw a huge shadow out of the corner of my eye. Kind like how people sense xenomorphs before they are brutally murdered. It moved and, when I went to investigate, there was nothing there. Any small noise will startle me or make me have to investigate. I have to check the closet and bathroom every night. Sometimes in the middle. It never makes the paranoia go away. What doesn't exist is somehow true in the very core of your soul. It is a curse I would never wish on anyone. That mirror this is my worst fear, I can't imagine that actually happening. I will be so detached from reality, nothing feels real. And I'm always convinced that no one will be able to bring me back, and no one is real. I see people that aren't there, we have conversations. I hear voices that aren't there some nice and some mean. I have a voice that just spews out racial slurs at everyone I look at. It's honestly hell to have, because there is such a bad stigma, and everyone expects you to carry on during an episode. But you can't. It's almost impossible, because you can't block things out, or control what you believe. Stuff like this makes me thankful I'm only allergic to shit. How do you shit without getting rashes around your asshole? Then, then, op lathers there, but with anti-allergy cream and shoves a suppository of the same stuff up there. My father has schizophrenia. I know this isn't exactly what the thread asked for, but I think I might have some solid insight for those in my position, or in my dad's position. Keep in mind I'm 16, so the scope of my insight may be a bit narrow. I still love him, and understand it's not his fault. I can't say it hasn't affected me significantly, and when I was younger I resented him a bit, but that was only because I didn't understand what was going on. My dad was a pretty average dad, until I was about 6 or 7, and then he had his psychotic break. He had to quit his job, and started sleeping all day long. He started acting differently, and I couldn't understand it. He got treatment, and is doing better, but he's still different. It's hard for me to tell, if he's symptomatic or not, but I've learned to pick up on signs. Looking back, it felt like I lost my dad somehow, because he was just a different person all of a sudden. My parents didn't explain to my sister or I what was happening for a while and my dad has never spoken to us about it. He's somewhat in denial of having the condition, which I've read is somewhat common. This whole situation really drove a wedge between my sister and I, because we were confused kids. My sister and I are working on improving our relationship, but it's still not perfect. It's had a pretty negative impact on me, and I don't blame my dad, it is what it is. Fear of triggering him has made my life a lot of walking on eggshells. 
As a result I've developed anxiety and other issues. I'm improving every day though, and have hope I'll be happy one day. I fear that one day I may have a break too, and follow in my dad's footsteps. My advice to parents in my dad's shoes, talk to your kids about this please. It will help avoid a lot of pain in the long run. It might be difficult, but it's really worth it. Not telling them or not being open about it may lead your child to mental illness themselves. It's a very hard thing for a kid to navigate, and even harder to navigate, if your parents are hiding it. My advice to children in my shoes, you are not alone, and you are loved. Don't blame your parent, it's not their fault. Although you might not see it now, they love you, and are really trying to be there for you. When you come out on the other side of your childhood, you will be a much stronger person, and may even be grateful you faced this adversity at such a young age. Stay strong. My mom committed suicide in the midst of a schizophrenic psychotic break when I was younger. I think about her all the time, and I wish I knew better then, because now I recognize that the environment we were in detrimented the hell out of her. I blamed her for not being normal and embarrassing me. I was just a kid, you know? Thank you for reassuring me on some ends. For a long time I thought she didn't love me, but now I think I can that say that she 